parts here in Pittsburgh are broken over the loss of Hall of Famer Mike Webster, who had in recent years suffered from mental illness and slipped into financial ruin. Why does an apparently healthy favorite son of this city die in disgrace at 50? This movie went from inception to screen in no time in less than a year. So it was in, it was in development for literally a minute and a half before we got the green lit green light to make the movie. You know, when you get a green light to make a movie, it's usually a confluence of a lot of factors, a script everybody loves, um, usually a piece of cast that everybody loves and is the right guy. Will Smith was always the right guy, I wrote the script for him to play. And, uh, and also this, the story of the story, you know, concussions and football was in the American zeitgeist for a while. It just felt like the right time to make the movie. Right actor, right studio, um, incredibly supportive producers, we were ready to go. I am the wrong person to have discovered this. If you don't speak for them, who will? What is it like tackling a topic like this, but then wanting to make it your own movie? Because I know you want to, you want to tell the story accurately. You want it to be a character-driven story, but at the same time, you know Sony's behind your movie. You want to make sure it's got an audience in the end. So, do you need to consider how everybody, football fans and non-football fans, will react to how you're telling the story in the end? No, you know if if. Your agenda is how everybody else feels about your movie. You're going to um, get paralyzed by self-consciousness and boredom and confused because everybody's got an opinion. And uh, what you need to do is decide what your tale is. You got to stay true to that, and you got to damn the torpedoes. You know the good news is with this film, Sony and I and my producers Ridley and Janina Scott were aligned on the kind of movie we wanted to make and the story we wanted to tell from the get-go, from absolutely the beginning, from inception to end. Uh, and then Will Smith joined the party and here we are. Actually, out of curiosity now, did you do uh, test screenings? Uh, yes, we did. And what was the general consensus from that? Did you take anything from those that you didn't expect? Um, I don't want to say I didn't expect it, but I think that there, were, I think the, there was enormously overwhelming public mass support from the movie from the beginning. I think audiences loved this movie from the start, even the early cuts of it, because at the end of the day, this isn't an issue movie. This is a really, this movie's a very, very emotional ride. And I think that even early audiences were surprised by how powerful the film is. Did you work with the NFL at all on this? I'm just curious about like how you deal with rights and the use of logos and team names yeah. and designs. Yeah, no, uh, we didn't work with the NFL even a lick. Um, there was a meeting that was going to happen, it never happened. Uh, the NFL is not our story, the NFL is not our problem. You know, my focus as the writer and then the director of the film was uh, was this character and his incredible journey, this one man's emotional immigrant journey to find out you know, what it really is to be an American, is to take on America and America's most sacred institution. So in terms of using logos and, you know, team names, that was never an issue. You know, when you're making a movie like this one and um, uh, when you're uh, defended by the truth, when you're bolstered by a nonfiction story, you know, there's a First Amendment principle called fair use and we're allowed to do it. What about in terms of just using people's life rights and things like that? Does anybody have something where it's like, you know, you can't use that thing specifically? Do people have the opportunity to make those rules? As a filmmaker and a storyteller, you have responsibility to not defame and injure people's reputations. You know, you want to be truthful. Um, and that wasn't our intention and our need. So uh, we, we're really bulletproof on this film in terms of the information in it because we want the audience to understand and to feel confident that they're in the hands of people who've done that work. They could sit back and enjoy what is really a very powerful emotional movie without having to negotiate with themselves like is this true, is this not? It's all true. Those answers make me think of Dr. Amalu and how he approached that, that whole idea of just not understanding why he shouldn't be allowed to say what is right and yeah. how not knowing is better. So. It's really, tr it's really true. The idea of what, how could ignorance possibly in any, in any universe be pre you know, preferable to knowledge is just beyond me too. I agree with him. As someone who loves playing sports to no end, if I was a football player, I just like can't even comprehend the feeling that I wouldn't want to know that my life is at risk in this respect. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we've shown the movie to football players uh, in the league, outside the league. Uh, retired and they all have the same very powerful emotion they they're often very weepy and very shaky and very uncontrolled afterwards I showed it to you know 
very large, very powerful grown men who are very kind of weak in the knees afterwards, including Chris Borland, who um, the 49er retired at 23, the you know almost rookie of the year. You know, he felt like he was watching some future version of himself, and it was very, very affecting. If you continue to deny my work, the world will deny my work. But men, your men, continue to die. Their families left in ruins. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Can you tell me a little bit about the idea of just making a movie based on a true story? Because I feel like I've been covering a lot of movies that are inspired by true mm -hmm. stories lately, and it's just been such a wide range in terms of, you know, how much is true, how much is it? When do you write inspired by a true story, or when do you flat out say this is a true story? Right. So how much of what we see on screen here is like 100% accurate? You know, look, when you're telling a story, there's poetic license, there's dialogue, there's performance. You know, we're not impersonating anybody, we're having actors find performance within their own artistic sensibilities. You know, that's sitting there and mirroring someone's thoughts and hand motions and, and, and accents necessarily. Even Will's accent is some approximation. He makes it very much his own. Um, that being said, I will say that this movie is 100% spiritually true. And what I mean by that is, even if there's poetic license, there's performance, there's scenes, there's edits, there's every time you cut a line and leave another line, like that's some kind of semi-fictional representation. What this movie means, the story it tells, its message, the power of this of the of Benedict Malu's journey, um, the lessons it has in store for us, are absolutely one hundred percent true. I just sat in on the press conference, and he has one heck of a personality. It it is much bigger in person than it was in the movie. So was that a choice to kind of tone it down? Because I yeah. kind of would have loved to have heard Will Smith try to do his laugh. Will Smith can do Bennett. A full, a full Bennett anytime he wants. You know, Will is a remarkable um, tactician as an actor, as an artist. He can, he could dial him in and out like a radio. Um, yeah, it's too much. It's just, you know, real Bennett is charismatic and idiosyncratic and beautiful and great for five, ten minutes. And then, but if you got to spend two hours with it, it could be a lot and distracting. So Will and I work to modulate that performance over the course of months. Now, can you tell me a little bit about your shot selection and particularly the lighting here? Because I just noticed that certain scenes, you know, certain characters were cast in shadows. So can you tell me a little bit about how you chose how to light yeah, that I pay stuff? Yeah, I pay a lot of attention to lighting and, um, and set decoration and production design to help tell the story in a parallel, almost subliminal way. So if, there, if a character, say, is besieged, in this case, when Bennett is feeling the full force of not just his paranoia, but actual challenge and and he's feeling threatened, you know, I'd like the lighting design to reflect that. You know, so the external reflects the internal, so the audience feels like they're immersed in what's happening to him. They feel like it's happening to you as well. Who are you? Tell the truth. Tell the truth.